live from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. Now at 5, freedom for four boys trapped in a Thailand cave. The first phase of a delicate rescue operation is a success. Good evening. I'm Suzanne Marquez. And I'm Peter Dow. Now the next phase. Rescue teams are hoping to bring another group of boys out in the next 24 hours. CBS 2's Christy Pardo is live in the newsroom with more on the preparations. Christy? Yeah, and the world is watching with bated breath. Authorities suspended the rescue just temporarily so they could replenish their tanks on the treacherous route. In Thailand, rescuers are gearing up for the next phase of their effort to free a youth soccer team trapped in a flooded mountain cave. On Sunday, divers escorted four of the 12 boys back to the surface, a two and a half mile journey through a series of dark and flooded tunnels. You can't make a horror movie that would even compare. And I've been involved in cave rescue for 30 years and I cannot uh, even think of one that was this complicated. After the four emerged from the cave, they were rushed to the hospital in ambulances. Officials in charge of the operation said they're hoping to bring another group of boys out by Monday or Tuesday. The good news is, is that the first phase was successful. They've had an opportunity to show it works. It's still dangerous, but it's much better odds for the remaining kids to come out now because of those initial ones. Before they attempt another rescue, the dive teams have to refill their oxygen tanks and replenish their supplies along the route inside the cave. So far, so good, but authorities say it could take another four days to rescue the remaining eight boys and their soccer coach. And we will, of course, be watching. Back to you. Definitely, Christy. Thank you. Stay with CBS2 and CBSLA.com for continuing coverage of the ongoing rescue operation in Thailand. More ahead at 530 on the CBS Weekend News. Breaking news from Van Nuys. The search for a 13-year-old girl believed to have been abducted is now over. The girl has been found safe. CBS 2's Chris Holmstrom is live in Van Nuys with the bizarre circumstances around her disappearance. Chris? Yeah, it really is. And I just spoke with the girl's mother. She's just relieved that her daughter was found. It's been a long 24 hours. And to make matters worse, this mother is also seriously sick. But take a look at this video. We were there when police came to her house to give her the good news. Now, this is the information that we have. Authorities tell us the 13 year old went missing Saturday afternoon. She was last seen with this man. He's believed to be 45 to 50 year old Michael Stewart, a local transient in the area. Well, the two apparently met several weeks ago at a bus stop in Van Nuys quickly became friends. Then Michael would start helping out the family, like taking the mother to the hospital. She would also pay him. Then Saturday afternoon, the two went to run some errands. Hours later, around 8 o'clock, the mother got a text message from Michael saying that they were having car issues. Well, after that, their cell phones, well, they were just shut off. And it wasn't until this afternoon, about an hour ago, that the mother got a call saying that her daughter was found in the North Hills area. My major concern is my daughter, her life. I love my daughter. She's my only daughter. And uh, I miss her. I haven't gotten any sleep the whole night since she left. I, I, I got so worried. Yeah, you just got a feel for that mother. Well, she's being reunited with her daughter at the police station. As for the person of interest, he has not been found. Here's another look at him. He was last seen driving the family's car. It's a 1998 Nissan Pathfinder, similar to this one. The license plate is 8CHH187. If you see this vehicle or the person of interest, you're asked to call police immediately. Reporting live from Van Nuys, I'm Chris Holmstrom, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Chris. We're in the middle of a record-breaking heat wave, and temperatures are beating the 100-degree mark once again in the San Fernando Valley. Hate to say it. CBS 2's Adriana Weingold is live now in Chatsworth to see how folks are doing there. Hey, Adriana. Yeah, well, it has been extremely hot today. We can tell you that for sure, but that certainly isn't stopping people from coming out here to enjoy a Sunday with their families. You can see people out here at the splash pad, kids cooling off, everyone here just trying to beat the heat. After days of extreme heat, the Kearney family just couldn't stay cooped up any longer. They came to Mason Park in Chatsworth looking for a place for their two and a half year old son Jackson to run around and stay cool, all while giving the AC a much needed break. You know, been triple digits, had over 100 for three days, and uh, they have a nice water feature park over here, so 
it's yeah, just a way to escape and save a little money, run the AC all day, it kind of adds up. Other families found themselves at the Northridge Park Aquatic Center, also looking to escape the heat and get out of the house after days of triple digits spent inside. All of my plants have wilted. <laughs> Uh, it's been extremely hot. We've been inside most of the weekend um, and Friday and just trying to stay cool. But it was so hot, even at the pool, that the lifeguards had to splash some water on the pavement to keep it cool enough for bare feet. I like about the slide because it, it's nice and it cools you off. At Balboa Park, it was game on for these soccer players despite the oppressive heat. With water and ice cream on standby, they were ready to take on the competition. For others, like Joanna Kearney, it was all about relaxing in the shade, splashing around in the water, and enjoying some popsicles. I think this is our second day here at the little water pad. Um, you know, just trying to save the AC to give it a rest. <laughs> the goal for this weekend seemed unanimous and simple. Stay cool and stay safe with hats, sunscreen and lots of water. And of course, it is always important to be able to find a place with air conditioning, especially when it gets this hot. We are live in Chatsworth, Adriana Weingold, CBS 2 News. Yeah, air conditioning, Adriana, or water like the kids in that video you showed us. Well, we are in a slow cool down, but unless you went to the beach today, it was another scorcher. Looking live at Century City, meteorologist Amber Lee. Boy, you have been busy these last few days, Amber. Hi, Peter. Hi, Suzanne. That's right. We have been very busy in the weather department tracking all of these temperatures. What I can tell you is that some cities actually tied or broke some records, maybe not quite as many cities as we saw the last couple of days, but the numbers are slowly coming in as we speak, so I'll have more on that probably in just a few minutes. But see, this is downtown LA. You can see downtown LA tied its old record set back last year, coming in at 98 degrees, so another well above average day. It was another hot one, and the sun going down at 8.07. This is what it still feels like outside, so we're still dealing with triple-digit temperatures in areas like San Bernardino and also Riverside. 97 for Ontario, 90 right now for downtown LA. So you can see slowly cooling down, but anyway, look at it. It is still hot. We have a lot of the yellow, uh, reds, that is, and the purples, and then we also have, have some a little bit of the yellows popping up right along the coast. Temperatures near our beach communities near LAX still at 82 degrees. I'll let you know when we can begin to slowly cool down. Back to you. All right, Amber, thanks. There are still power outages, and some people have had no air conditioning all weekend. More on that in just a few minutes. Meantime, the LA Fire Department is staffing up for this fire season. Service has been officially restored at an iconic fire station in Mission Hills. That also means 12 new full time firefighting positions. To be able to restore the engine company here at Fire Station 75, something that was lost back in 2011 as a result of the budget cuts, is a huge, huge win for Mission Hills, for Silmar. For LA City Councilwoman Rodriguez, this also hits home. Her father once worked at the same fire station. Wow. Uh, nice. Mandatory evacuation orders remain in effect today in Forest Falls. The small community of about 900 people is in the mountains east of San Bernardino. Nearly 1,200 acres have already burned. Officials say the fire is 5% contained. In Santa Barbara County, the holiday fire in Goleta is 80% contained. Full containment is expected by July 11th. 100 acres have burned, 10 homes have been destroyed, and three others damaged. Nine other buildings were also destroyed. Mandatory evacuations continue. Still ahead on CBS 2 News at 5, one of two people sickened by a nerve agent last week in England has died. And torrential rain leads to deadly flooding in western Japan. That's next.